Amazon. Amazon is saying they're going to be replacing uh, what could have been 600 jobs with physical AI. Check it out. This morning, concerns that Amazon, the second largest private employer in the country, is planning one of the biggest workplace transformations in modern history. In a fulfillment center, the Cardinal robot will pack packages into carts. The New York Times, citing leaked documents, reports Amazon expects sales to double by 2033, growth that would normally require 600,000 more workers. But the company is reportedly looking to fill those jobs with robots and automate 75% of its operations. We could do this with our robot. We could do this with our technology. That's what we're going to do. In the near future, Amazon reportedly estimates automation could help it save more than $12 billion and shave about 30 cents off each item it ships. In a statement, Amazon said the leaked documents reflect the perspective of just one team and don't represent our overall hiring strategy, adding that the company is actively hiring and plans to fill 250,000 positions for the holiday season. One of the things that we've been proud of. Only seasonal, baby. It's only seasonal our 10-year history is is the ability to develop robots that work well along. You said Amazon has been planning this since 2023. Mm -mm. Amazon has been planning this since 2012. 2013. Alongside people. It comes amid growing fears of technology replacing human workers. The so-called godfather of artificial intelligence has been sounding the alarm. If I worked in a call center, I'd be terrified. If I was someone like a legal assistant, a paralegal, they're not going to be needed for very long. For mundane intellectual labor, AI is just going to replace everybody. Well, Amazon has said it's busy training human workers for high paying jobs that will include working with robotics. Listen, if you are not a repair tech, if you are not into AI to learn more about how to work with the software, to reprogram the software, prompt engineering, if you have not integrated that into your skill set, then you will be replaced. Let me tell you, you will be replaced. I cannot stress this enough. We went through this over uh, over in the Patreon. Shout out to the bag chasers. Shout out to the Patreon members. We deep dove into it because companies don't have an obligation to the people. And that's one of the things that people need to understand. Amazon and any other company's obligation is not to the citizens. Poor people think like that. Oh, they owe us. Oh, it is their responsibility to take care of us. Millionaires, billionaires, we're going to tax them, whatever, so on and so forth. It's always going to be another state. It's always going to be another opportunity. They can always move their headquarters before they, they look at you and say, hey, you supposed to be getting a slice of the pie. Their responsibility is to the people that are invested in a company. So if you do not have stocks, which... If I'm having a child today, if I'm having a child today, which I did this for my daughter, I did this for my daughter. Everything that I spend on her, half of it will go into stocks. Half of it will go into buying into equity, into the companies of the future. If you're looking for some form of universal basic income or passive income because of the the replacement of people with technology, then that is going to have to be a, a responsible adult investing in themselves. If I am a person, because y'all learn to live off, think about it, you learn to live off a of half when the federal government decide that they want to tax you over in New York. If you make a certain amount of money, they making you pay 52% in taxes. That means more than half of your income is supposed to go to taxes. If I'm you, I'm paying myself and I'm trying to figure out how I can invest and be able to get residual income as a result of being an investor in these companies. And that is the only way that you're going to be able to survive. Your income is going to have to be supplemented by people and, and companies that are the future of technology. And if you are not a shareholder, then you are going to stop complaining. You're going to have to stop complaining about the fact that you ain't got this or you ain't got that and you ain't got that and so on and so forth. Listen, we all need to be striving to make more money, but it's not just about what you make money doing. It's about what you do with it when you get it and stop increasing your lifestyle to meet whatever it is that you earn right now because there's going to be bumps, bruises, layoffs, furloughs, ups and downs, good times, bad times, times of, of feast and times of famine. 
And if you are not prepared for it by during the times of feast to invest so that you prepare it for if anything happens in famine so that you have enough time to be able to pivot and do things differently, you are going to be disappointed. I'm telling you the new standard for living good is going to be investing in yourself first. You should have already been doing it. When I told people, hey, I'm investing the majority of my income, everything that I have in real estate and in, in stocks and this and that, so on and so forth, people laugh. Oh man, you supposed to be having a big house. You supposed to be having that. You supposed to be having this. No, I'm not Kenyon Martin. I'm not a Neanderthal. I'm not a Neanderthal. I understand the game. I understand the play. I'm putting my daughter in a position to where she don't have to suffer through the same BS that some of these people that are complaining on the internet is going through. I don't want her to be feasting and famine and having to do the same thing that other people do. <laughs> don't worry about it, Quentin. Don't worry about it, Quentin. I'm not a Neanderthal. <laughs> oh, if you come for the king, you best not First miss. First of all, this event where you are, can you tell us about them? Uh, if you have, but I was, <laughs> <laughs> the first is uh, in our manipulation uh, ro robot that we call Blue Jay. And what Blue Jay, the way that you can think of that is that we can, you can take three assembly lines and put it in the same footprint of one. Uh, what it does is help eliminate the menial, the mundane, and the repetitive. And it could pick more than 75% of the inventory that we actually sell in our sortable network, which is a really big deal. I'm really proud of that. And I'll also say there's just something interesting about I'm Blue Jay as well as, as compared to our other bird uh, manipulation systems <laughs> uh cardinal sparrow and and robin uh, it took us about uh, about three years to kind of design deploy and uh, get out to our frontline employees um we have actually uh, done blue jay with the power of ai in just over a year so it's really had to accelerate the pace of innovation it's, i think what a lot of people think about amazon and robots yeah. i just want to jump in because we don't have a ton of time but i, yeah, I and i want we'll get to some of the other announcements they, they think yeah, about the, the, yeah, cool. the kiva systems robots the big acquisition yeah. at the time you know 2012 that was a big acquisition for amazon and and they've seen pictures of the way that those can move large loads of, of things across warehouses but if you were to go into a state-of-the-art amazon warehouse today what would you see that's that's in addition to those kiva robots yeah, in addition to our, our the world's first goods to person fulfillment uh, uh, strategy, which was just a really good idea, uh, where we have more than a million robots that we manufacture actually in Massachusetts uh, doing that job uh, every day, you're going to see more of the unstructured fields, right? So you're going to see green robot that we call Proteus that can move uh, big uh, cargoes of of packages. Uh, to the right dock at, at the right time. Uh, you're going to see uh, many more manipulation systems that we have in there, uh, eliminating kind of the repetitive motions that we have. No one wants to lift a 50 pound box, uh, box all day. Robin uh, does that, Cardinal does that, moving it into some of these. And that's another thing, right? Because don't nobody want to work and do some of the same jobs. And y'all was saying it even when they was doing all of the deportation of the illegal migrants. Oh man. They doing the jobs that we don't want to do. Okay, so now they're going to have robots replacing and doing it, and you ain't got to have to worry about nothing, right? Because don't nobody actually want to do no work. Don't nobody actually want to do anything that's going to add value into society. Everybody just want to complain about what's going on. Uh, Proteus bound uh, 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 carts uh, that, that we have, uh, you're going to see much more collaborative robotics, right? So that's where we build our robotic systems to enable people to augment what people are capable of. And uh, we really believe in the philosophy of, of, of people and machines working together. How can we build the tool set that enables our employees uh, to do their job, not only more efficiently, but also with, uh, with better safety in mind? Let me tell you something. That's a slogan. That's all it is. It's a slogan. How can we enable people and robots to be able to work better together? When they say they have replaced 600,000 jobs, those were jobs that they could have potentially had to give out to people. But let me tell you what's really happening. They're tired of people going on FMLA. 
They tired of people suing because I got fired for the wrong reasons. They tired of sexual harassment lawsuits inside of the warehouse. They tired of you calling off of work. They tired of you saying that you ain't going to make it. They tired of people saying, oh, it's too hard. I didn't expect to work this hard tonight. They tired of people pretending like they didn't know that they were supposed to be there at that time. They tired of people missing work and being late every day. They tired of people acting like they hurt their back on the job. They are putting themselves in a position and they will invest billions and billions and billions of dollars into preventing themselves from having to deal with the same things, which then lower the cost of them being able to have to, you know, per package that they got shipped, right? Per item shipped. The total cost per item shipped. And they basically are able to continue to fulfill things and be a lot more efficient doing it versus when you did it yourself. Think about it like the assembly line, right? When the assembly line first came on, humans did every single thing, but they had so much problems, so many problems, so many, so many um, quality issues, the whole nine yards. All of that. And as technology sped up, you had less recalls, less quality issues, less problems, less breakdowns, less human errors, less fatalities on the job and more efficiency. And now one of the things that they protested for at Unifor in which Canada I should be addressing some issues with Canada. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow with Canada and the UAW, right? Unifor and the UAW is that they want to guarantee jobs and they also want to grow jobs. All right. So there's this robot arm called Blue Jay. You just talked about it. You know, you yeah. guys are using this AI agent um, called Iluna. Uh, and then Correct. you're also working with augmented reality glasses to be worn by drivers in delivery trucks uh, in the field. There's like so much going on. Step back for a moment because you guys have a lot of data. You look at what you're doing. Um, I'm just curious, investors who are thinking about Amazon and what you are doing, how do they think about the long term like ROI, return on investment when it comes to the investments you guys make in robots is the goal about labor efficiency throughput speed or is it margin expansion uh kind of all tie of across above. your fulfillment operations what is it all of the above yeah well uh, definitely efficiency we we think about efficiencies and how can we gain efficiency through all the chain of our fulfillment uh, processes uh for sure and and you mentioned uh, data and data is the fuel for ai systems data has allowed us to bring uh, think of the a uh, uh, the body of being our robotics, but bring the mind to robotics, allowing it to be more adaptable, uh, more fluid. Uh, you can almost think of this as the ability to pour our robotic systems into any size building, any scale of, of building to amplify what our employees are already doing. We want to give them an amazing tool set. And we see that when we do that, we're more productive, right? When you do robotics right, when you do collaborative robotics where you need both people and machines doing what they do best and they do different things better, um, that it allows you to be more productive. And when you're more productive, that allows you to invest more mm -hmm. in people. We've upskilled more than 700,000 of our employees, uh, which is a great stat. Uh, and also in our robotics, we've expanded from the, the Kiva days, we've expanded from just a movement solution to now movement and mobility and sortation and storage and perception systems, packing systems that have really changed the game for our customers. That's a big deal to us. But so basically they are increasing efficiency. They are reducing uh, labor and they are going to continue to run up a bag.